Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange, and the host who might be a ghost. It's becoming increasingly more relevant as Halloween nears. Uh, welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual literature, all the out of the ordinary literature that I have found in my travels across the Pacific States of America. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a book that I have read, um, an interesting book from an interesting author who dabbles in sci-fi, although this time he's dabbling in a, a little bit in a alternate history, uh, counter-positive history, stuff like that. Uh, I am referring to The Man in the High Castle uh, by Philip K. Dick. The cover is interesting and also pretty terrible. Uh, it's just a photo of a body with a bunch of red dots around it. Um, I don't know if that's like highlighting what the Superman is, uh, the, the ideal human is, or if like it, they just didn't know what else to put on it and they just put um, this. <laughs> Uh, it's it's not good like it, it uh, and it absolutely sets me up for like knowing how how knowing about the quality of this book uh, you know don't judge a book by its cover but you know I think you can here so I have uh, previously talked about Philip K Dick before uh, I um, I uh, I talked about, uh, for Short Story Tuesday, I talked about uh, We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, uh, which was a short story that was the basis of like Total Recall, where one of the characters uh, sort of like recalls memories of them being a, uh, a spy sent to assassinate a politi political figure in on Mars, uh, and uh, like uh, later they, they recall memories of them like being the savior of the human race. Uh, even though those like memories were supposed to be implanted or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed We Can Rem Remember It For You Wholesale. Um, that was my introduction to Philip K. Dick, uh, and I had hoped that uh, it, um, The Man in the High Castle would be the same level of quality. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that turned out not to be the case, and I will explain why later. I do enjoy alternate history, like counter positives. Uh, of like what would have happened if X had happened, like if if this South had won the Civil War, uh, if you know Germany had won World War II, if uh, you know George Washington hadn't been the first president, what if it was someone else? You know, all interesting things to think about, uh, and you know uh, historians like to talk about it too, although they don't lend much credit to those types of things because you know it's not what actually happened, and they typically focus on what did happen. Uh, so anyways, yeah, uh, if you want to know more about Philip K. Dick, uh, check my, uh, my, uh, We Can Remember It For You wholesale video. I talked a little bit about him there, and I also made reference to, uh, uh, Noah's video that he did on, like, the author, uh, the author, like, sort of grand video about who Philip K. Dick was and everything about him, uh, which is a quality video, and I linked to it in, a, uh, in the original video. Uh, so yeah, definitely go check that out because he, he does it, uh, Philip K. Dick, more justice than I could ever do. Let's talk about uh, The Man in the High Castle. I'll provide a little summary and a little analysis, and we will move on from there. The Man in the High Castle takes place in an alternate 1962. Uh, roughly 17 or so years after the end of the the uh, the end of World War II. So what has changed? The Axis won World War II. Uh, Germany, uh, because the U because somebody assassinated uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, uh, the U the U.S. maintained an isolation uh, isolationist isolationist. I'll get it right eventually. Uh, philosophy. Uh, where they decided not to participate in World War II at all. Uh, and so that resulted in Russia failing 
the UK failing. Uh, and then eventually Germany like attacked from the east and Japan attacked from the west. And they divvied up America. So there's the south, uh, which is kind of a puppet regime. Uh, the American sort of northwest, which is run by uh, Germany still. Uh, you have the Colorado Rockies, that area, which is a neutral zone. Uh, although, you know, eventually you think Germany or Japan would take it for themselves. And then you have uh, the Pacific States of America, uh, which are run by Japan. Uh, so um, the story takes place in the Pacific States, in San Francisco, that general area. Uh, as, so, um, as a bunch of characters, uh, you know, go about their lives living in an alternate version where they're, they're being ruled by, you know, fascist regime, regimes. So there are multiple characters that are the, that are the focus of this story. Uh, first you have Juliana. Um, she lives in the unregulated uh, Colorado Rockies. Uh, she just broke up with her husband, separated from him. His name is Frank. He's also a main character in the story. Uh, she's teaching judo in the Rockies and she eventually falls for a character named Joe uh, who uh, is sort of a trucker just traveling through the area. Uh, at least that's what he claims to be. Uh, we'll find out later in the story how that is not the case for him. Uh, and so yeah, uh, like they, they fall sort of fall in love and um, uh, strike up somewhat of a relationship. There is also Frank, you know, Juliana's ex. Uh, he is living in the Pacific States of America and he is greatly unhappy. He still has rem memories of the war and like pre-war times where you weren't under the oppressive thumb of Japanese uh, or even the Germans. Uh, Frank is also Jewish, so that's something he has to like worry about. He has, he's changed his name a little bit. Uh, he blackmailed his old employer uh, and he started up uh, a business with his new employer uh, or with his with his friend uh, and so he's going through um, uh, throughout the story he's he's dealing with the fact that he's like worried about the Nazis catching up with him and uh, his hatred for the Japanese and, and like trying to start this new business and be successful, uh, scheming his way to, to victory. You also have uh, Bang, Baines uh, and Tago, Tagomi. Uh, they're sort of in the business class and they are, uh, uh, they're keeping up to date with what's going on with Germany because throughout this book, there's uh, Philip K. Dick uh, highlights how uh, Adolf Hitler is dealing with syphilis, so he's debilitated at this point in time. Uh, so the German high command, the Chancellor, is, is some other dude, uh, and he dies um, relatively early in the in the story. And so there's a lot of speculation about who's going to be the next German Chancellor. Is it going to be someone who's favorable to America, uh, someone who wants to destroy America as well as the Japanese? Uh, it's it's a bit up in the air, uh, so uh, they're keeping up to that, and it's eventually revealed that like Baines is not who he says he is, uh, and he actually has a stake in who becomes the next uh, chancellor. Uh, so uh, that goes on at that time. There's also uh, Robert Chidan, uh, who is a rare collections antique dealer, uh, and he interacts with some of the other characters in the story. Uh, he's he kind of feels inferior to the. Uh, uh, the Japanese and the Germans, like he really hates them and he, he sees them as oppressive and he tries to sympathize with them by using the same language that they use. Uh, but that, that seems to alienate him from them even more. So he's going throughout, through that throughout the entire story. Uh, and this, you follow these characters throughout the entire, entire story and it eventually ends at a place where like, uh, each of them, are sort of at peace in a way. Um, Baines is revealed to be a, a, a spy for Germany uh, who has a stake in making sure that Goebbels, who would destroy everything, uh, doesn't become chancellor uh, and is actually another person entirely. Uh, uh, and then Juliana like ends up killing Joe because it turns out he's a, a, a German um, SS agent of sorts. 
uh, and he wants to kill the man in the high castle. So there's a story in this book uh, called The Grasshopper Lies Heavy or something like that, which is hilariously like an alternate history of what would happen if America had won uh, World War II. Weird, weird and hilarious how uh, Philip K. Dick includes this in his story. And so a lot of characters are talking about the story and how it's nonsense at times, but it also makes sense. Uh, and Juliana ends up going to visit uh, the author of the book, um, who, like, he used to live in a high castle, so, like, a, a place where the Germans couldn't get him because he's writing subversive literature. Uh, and uh, so at the end of the story, he's like, you know, I, we, I moved my family back to a normal house. Uh, you know, I'm kind of worried that, like, Germany might kill me, but, like, also I can't spend the rest of my life running away from them. Uh, you know, that's not how I want to live. And so Juliana kind of takes that in um, and synthesizes that as the story ends. And that's pretty much the end of it right there. So in terms of summary, there's not a whole lot to leap onto here. The first thing that I noticed was, you know, the alternate history, uh, specifically with um, with Germany and uh, Japan uh, having won World War II uh, mainly due because the United States chose not to enter the war. Um, and um, it's interesting because after the war Germany and uh, Japan divide up the uh, the United States and, and take it as their own. And it seems to be a peaceful relationship, although um, Japan is not nearly as advanced at, as, uh, as Germany at this point. Uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of a weird relationship going on. Uh, but I, 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 I kind of take, like, um, like, I take, like, I, I, um, I hesitate to say this is credible at all, because first and foremost, both empires were very fascist, and both empires viewed themselves as superior to all others. And I don't think, in any way, would they be allies. Like, they may have worked on the same side, but that's because they had a common enemy. After that enemy's gone, like, they're gonna start attacking one another. Like, Germany and Japan could not, like, even with a, a neutral zone in between them, uh, they could not, like deal with the fact that the other exists because the Germans believe themselves to be supermen and like the Nazis were like every other race is inferior to ours so they would have like killed Japan and like Japan they're they're portrayed sympathetic in this in this book which I take offense to because like they they were very fascist and they they did a lot of war crimes in China uh in Manchuria uh as well as in a number of other places uh which you could say is in the heat of war but uh like I I they they would absolutely view the Germans as the enemy after the war and would attack them too so that would um that that kind of the credibility of, of how this, this post-war setting takes place is kind of iffy at best. Uh, and, and I won't say it's, I won't, it doesn't hurt the story as a whole. It's just being a student of history and, and knowing what I do about both regimes, uh, I don't think that they could have worked together at all or even like tolerated each other at all. Um, so, you know, I guess maybe Philip K. Dick doesn't have that information, but... Uh, I do. Another thing I like is the character of Robert Chadan and how he's constantly at in, in conflict with uh, with uh, the the people who are like ruling over him. Uh, like he tries to um, sit, like get in their good graces, and in many ways he does. Uh, the, his ja his new uh, Japanese sort of. Uh, customers like they invite him over for dinner and they seem very peaceful and friendly towards him uh they even try to accommodate him by serving a traditional american dinner of like um a steak and, and a baked potato uh which which is super delicious uh and robert notes that he hasn't had in a while so he's thankful for it uh but he he also like he he uh, in in the process of becoming closer to them he tries to adopt their language like oh us us Americans are inferior or America could never take over Japan because Japan is is superior and like it kind of alienates him because the people can tell he's not sincere in, in in what he's saying but he's also he also knows that he's not sincere in what he's saying and it it creates a like a a rift between him and these um these very nice people. Uh, 
they're, they, they still engage in, like, business, uh, but it, it's kind of, uh, like, there's this unspoken tension between them that never really gets addressed um, throughout the rest of the book. But the reason I point it out is because uh, uh, Dick, I think, intentionally did that to highlight how no matter how kind and friendly uh, your rulers may be, like, they're still your rulers. They still destroyed America and replaced it with their own government. Uh, and you, you, like, no matter how much you try to ignore that, like, it's no longer the country you recognize. Uh, and so can you truly be friends? Can you truly have peaceful relations with your, with the invaders? I, uh, I don't think so, and I don't think Philip K. Dick does so either. And it, it creates a lot of anxiety within, within his characters. Something that I don't think uh, Dick really addresses directly. It's present throughout the book, and I can't tell if it's sincere or if it's uh, if it's just racism and like like uh, like uh, anti-Semitism on Dick's part. Uh, an example: What I'm talking about is there's a lot of racism, like. Um, uh, people of color, uh, black people in particular, are made to be a subservient class. They're slaves again, and the Jews are exterminated. Uh, and uh, you know, life is pretty much terrible if you're if you're not white, and if, even if you are white, like you're still subjugated in a number of ways. So. I thought that was interesting on Dick's part, but I don't know if it's intentional. Like, it uh, uh, is he trying to highlight that even um, like like. Like, is he trying to highlight how, uh, like, because, you know, black people didn't have it very well in, like, the 1950s and 60s. Is he trying to highlight that, how, like, uh, the, the Germans are treating black people bad, but, like, in, in post-war America, black people are already being treated poorly. I don't know if he's trying to sh make this connection or if I made that leap on my own, uh, but it's an interesting idea. Uh, and I wish this book would have explored it more, but all the characters are white, uh, so, you know, there's, or, you know, Japanese, uh, so there's not really much, uh, much in the way of, of exploring those themes. Uh, it would have been interesting if, if he had, uh, Philip K. Dick had gone that way. Overall, though, like, the biggest problem with this book is not a lot happens. It's just characters living their life, and in the background, like, uh, Germany is trying to choose its new chancellor, uh, and some characters have to make some hard choices, but not a lot happens. It, it's kind of bare bones, and there's a lot of potential with this premise of exploring an alternate reality. And I think there are probably a lot of books that do that, do what Dick did better. Uh, unfortunately, like I, I was a hundred pages into this book and I'm like, what's, what's happening? I don't know where, where he's going with this. It doesn't seem interesting. Uh, and like even when he, when, I thought he was going to go somewhere with like the grasshopper lies heavy with the alternate history, uh, inside the alternate history, but he, he doesn't really seem to go anywhere with it. Uh, just the weird, like, I'm not, I'm not so worried anymore about what's going to happen with me. Um, I think it it kind of takes away from uh, my enjoyment of the of the book a lot. Like there's a lot of interesting bits and pieces within it, but nothing overall connecting it as a whole that makes it worth exploring. Uh, so yeah, ultimately I would say I, um, I I can't really recommend it. Like like read it if you want if you're if you like Philip K. Dick. Uh, it's uh, it it probably informs you about a lot of, it, of his other work, but I wouldn't say go out and seek it on your own. Uh, it's it's. It, it definitely never clicked with me. And I'm not going to say it's a bad book. It just, it just wasn't for me. Like I said, I'm still very interested in checking out uh, his future, like all, all of his other work that he's done. Uh, maybe like The Man of the High Castle is an exception and his other work is, is of a higher quality, um, in my eyes at least. Um, if you disagree and you think that The Man in the High Castle was a wonderful book um, or you want to comment on something I had to say, feel free to leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you and have a discussion about, about this book uh, and about alternate, uh, alternate history America. Uh, until then, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe uh, so that other people may find out about the glorious books that I catalog in my travels. Uh, otherwise, uh, I wish you the best of times and your weird and alternate history travels. Farewell.